Thank you, Mr. President. Last week, the governor issued an executive order that seems, in my mind, to be made out of an abundance of caution, but out of a lack of information. Those of us who live in the Upper Peninsula don't have to stretch our memories too far back to recall the winter of 2014. I remember that I was on my way back from Lansing to the UP when I received a phone call from some of the propane providers in the Upper Peninsula who were having their, ca their contracts for their large vendors con canceled due to the lack of propane across the Upper Midwest and in particular in the Upper Peninsula. This shortage of 2014 resulted directly from the long-term shutdown that had occurred on Line 5. A shutdown that occurred because of EPA rules and determinations that slowed down their ability to do annual maintenance. Couple that with the tough winter that we had, we suddenly found ourselves in an enormous energy crisis in the Upper Peninsula that saw prices of propane spike upwards to $8 a gallon. This put many of the businesses that provide propane out of business. It forced churches and other small businesses to close and forced many private homeowners to have to find alternatives like burning their couches in order to heat their homes. This crisis was addressed with bi-weekly phone calls um, between myself and the other UP uh, members such as Reps Kivala and DeAnda and Senator Casperson with the governor's office, with emergency services, the state police, for months. We toured places that were having disaster happen after disaster because of the lack of fuel to heat homes. I'm not sure what good another study is going to do. We've had several studies, some done by the state, some done by environmental groups, all of which have consistently shown that there are no viable alternatives to supplying the UP's energy needs right now, especially no viable alternatives to importing the propane that we need if we're not using Line 5. It would be over 200 trucks a day, every day, just for the Upper Peninsula. This is disregarding the even more propane users in northern lower Michigan. This study is a fool's errand and a distraction. It is fiddling while Rome burns. It's not going to show us something that we don't already know, and it's, in my opinion, an effort to continue to try and take us away from the solution that was bipartisanly supported last term, a solution that does not put taxpayers' money on the line, a solution that gets the lines out of the water as quickly as possible, and continues to supply the energy needs of not just the Upper Peninsula, but the Lower Peninsula as well. We're finding out more and more just how much of our economy in this state depends on the products delivered by Line 5. It's not just those of us in the UP using propane. It's the oil and gas producers across northern Lower Michigan who are able to put their products on the line. It's those who are using the end products after refineries, such as the Detroit airport. We need this line to be viable and functional, and we need to update it and move it into the tunnel as quickly as possible. But to somehow say, we're going to do all of that, but in the meantime, we have to shut down the line before the new lines are ready, is not a good policy. It's not good for the people of Michigan. It's certainly not good for the constituents that I serve in the Upper Peninsula. I hope that members here will try to get straight facts and not listen to this constant drumbeat that, oh, it all just goes to Canada anyway, we don't use it in Michigan. That is not true. Or those who say, we can still get the propane in the line, we'll just close it at the bridge. That's not chemically possible. That's not how the chemistry works in transporting petroleum goods. It would not work that way. If you need more information, come and see me, Mr. President. I appreciate your time and your support on this issue. Thank you.